heads up. Okay. I am not sure how I'm going to go by this, but I'm just going to let the Spirit of God take me over. Lord Jesus, help me with my words. I was uh, asked to do this on request of a friend. And um, Fiona, I I'm sorry. You really need to start taking your faith seriously with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not trying to hurt you or harm you because I do actually, I very much care for you and I very much love you as a sister in Christ, but right now you're not headed in a very good spot. And right now it is on my mission by God to call the saints out, to call them out to call them forward to Jesus Christ because you need to start stepping up on your faith. And I know you, a little while ago, had a, uh, a hangout on your faith. I didn't watch it, but at least I could say you were trying. But at the same time, what do you do? You go back and, um, you go back and you do Talking Shit Tuesday. I can say that Talking Shit Tuesday is probably the worst place you can be as a believer in Christ. You're not supposed to associate with people like that. I can pour out scripture after scripture after scripture of why you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, Fiona. And, um, you, you know, like I said, I, I love you. I, I think you're an amazing person. I think you're an amazing mind. But at the same time, I see these people corrupting you as a person and corrupting your soul. Um, and don't get me wrong, I've, I've been corrupted by them myself plenty of times. Plenty of times I've been corrupted by them. Plenty of times I've, you know, seen the Antichrist spirit come through. And, um, you, my sister, you need to go and uh, stand, stop, stand strong for Jesus Christ. Uh, I hear you several times just laughing at the most blaspheme, blasphemous of jokes. And I'm sorry, but why are you doing the blasphemous jokes? Why are you laughing at these jokes? I mean, we're talking about the, the God, the God that saved you, the God that shed his blood for you, the God that, you know, gives you life. This I can take it. Trust me, I can take it. But at the same time, Fiona, it's time for you to step out of the crowd. It's time for you to shine as an to shine, show his glory, show his light, show his mercy, show his grace, Fiona. Show him to the world and step out. Because you have a platform, Fiona. You have a great platform to push your message of Jesus Christ on the people. You have what now? A thousand subscribers now? You have a platform, girl. You are talking to a thousand people, but instead of talking to this thousand people about Jesus Christ, instead you're talking about things that shouldn't even matter. You're talking against um, other fellow believers in Christ. You're going against G-Man. You met G-Man, and you felt him up. You felt him up, and that's not proper for a married woman. Don't say you didn't feel him up. I talked to G-Man. He told me everything. He told me everything. And let me just tell you, Fiona, you need to step out of... I'm, I'm going to show you some Bible references. I'm just trying to get to my destination at the moment. And, you know, I, I say this because I care for you. I'm not trying to be harsh on you at all. I'm trying to help stir that spirit up help get you in line with Jesus Christ because we don't have much time left anymore. We really don't have much time at all left. And I know you could say no one knows the date or time. No, we may not know the date or time, but we certainly know what the season is. And there's way too many things going on in this world where I cannot see help but to see what season we live in. We live in the season of the second coming and he's coming. And he's coming fast. And he's going to come with fury. And I, I, I don't want to see you be one of those people where Jesus looks you straight in the eye and say, I never knew you. I never knew you. 
get away from me, you worker of inequity. And the reason why you're a worker of inequity is you're not treating your brothers and sisters in Christ right. You know, when you see your when you see your brothers and sisters in Christ being mocked and scorned, should you just stand there and laugh with them? Did, did Peter and James and Mary, when they saw Jesus Christ on the cross being laughed at and mocked and scorned, were they laughing along with the centurions? Were they laughing with the Romans? Were they laughing with the Pharisees? Were they laughing? Were they laughing when he was being persecuted? Were they, were they laughing? No, they weren't. They were crying. They were in tears. They were in mourning. That's something you need to start doing. And I'm sorry I have a loud voice, but the Spirit of God came in me and it's kind of hard to contain him. Uh, I can't contain him when he comes out. This is passion. This isn't fury. This isn't anger. And I'm sorry it's a loud voice, but this is how he is. So get used to it. Because he'll speak a little louder than you than you actually ever thought of once, you know, you're in front of him. You're going to be on your knees, Fiona. You're going to be on your knees. And you're going to be saying sorry for all those things you've done to others. All those mockings. All those scornings. All that hatred that you've allowed your brothers and sisters to go into. He's going to go and hold you accountable for it. All those words you say against your brothers and sisters in Christ, he's going to hold you accountable for it. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. I can't be like, Lord, just go easy on Fiona. She was just doing it for the lulls. Do you think that do you think the Lord is the Lord who takes excuses? Did he take did he take the excuse of Adam and Eve in the garden? Oh, it was the serpent that you made that did it. Oh, it, it, it was the one you made that did it. Oh, it was, you know, are, is he going to take those excuses? No, he isn't because you are left without an excuse about this. You are left without excuse. Okay, Fiona, because you know what the scripture says. I know you do. But it's time for you to get your act together with the Lord. It's not time. It's not the time where you can go and play. La, 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 la. I'm going to have fun with my life and do whatever I want and whatever I please. Because once saved, always saved. No. No. You have to allow the spirit of the Lord to abide in you. Because if he does not abide in you, you do not abide in him. There's no way you can get through this world in the next coming years or days or whenever Jesus Christ comes. Whenever things start falling. Because all we're doing right now is we're waiting for that abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel. We are waiting for that. All the other scriptures, all the other prophecies have been fulfilled. They've been fulfilled. What are we supposed to do when we see the season is coming? We see a brother and sister in Christ. And what are they doing? They're just lollygagging around, not woken up to the fact that they are in Christ. And they need to get their act together. You don't want Jesus to come and catch you mocking and scorning with these unbelievers, these antichrists. And they are antichrists because they deny Jesus Christ in the flesh. You can say it elsewise, but they do. And you hang out with these people all the time. Why? Why? Because they're nice to you? Of course they're going to be nice to you. The devil likes giving you nice, sweet, yummy things to get you, you know, to lose track. They sweet talk you. Do they really actually care about you? Would they bend their back for you? I doubt they would. I doubt they would, Fiona. I doubt they'd do anything to help you out in a, cer in, in a real serious situation. Now, I know my sister. I know... You do help people out. You are kind. You are charitable. You are. You have great strengths within the Lord. But there comes a time where you're going to have to go and take your faith seriously. There comes a time where you're going to have to take it seriously. And I'm just saying this because I love you as a sister. Not to try to scorn you or mock you or hurt you in any way. you got to wake up to this reality. you got to wake up. You know, it's it's... You know, and then there's certain things in the Bible that you like to deny, and I'm like, uh, not wise, Fiona. Not wise to deny those things. 
you know, and I know you, I know you love science and science is, you know, I, you, you put some, like, there's nothing wrong with science per se, but you put science as this is the truth and that's it. But if you actually look at the reality of science, science is in a constant flux of always changing, always in a constant flux of changing. There is no security within science. None. Because it's always changing. Ah, son of a bitch. Oh, your phone. Attack of my phone begins again. Come here, your phone, you dumb, stupid thing. I can't stand this phone. I need something better to hold my phone up. Like, seriously, I need, like, some expensive freaking equipment or something. Anyway. Listen, Fiona. I got some scripture for you. Because, um, you need to get your act together, girl. You need to get your act together real quick. Because that's all we have is just real quick to get our acts together. We can't go lollygagging forever. We can't go and, you know, think that it's okay to go and mock and scorn people that shouldn't be mocked and scorned because eventually God's going to take vengeance. God's going to take vengeance. Science is not of the devil. I'm saying there's no security in science because science is always in a constant flux of change. The words of God, they don't change. They stay pretty much finalized, and that's it. There is a difference to what I said. Don't twist my words. Thank you very much. I don't appreciate my words being twisted into your little atheistic viewpoint. Because I don't like atheists per se because of them. How much they've destroyed people's lives. How much they try to button people's lives. How much they lie about people and do things to people. Evil things to people. Evil things to people. Like, let's just say, if I went and I called CPS on Fiona for her children, let's just say, would you say that's evil to call CPS on someone? based on someone you don't really know, you just see them on camera. Someone cheated and abused Chris. No one cheated on Chris. Chris cheated on me, and no one abused Chris. So don't even start that. I ain't no Dane adulterer. That's a lie, and whoever says that is a liar from the pit of freaking hell. I've been nothing but faithful to that man. All through my marriage, I was faithful to that man. Yeah, I had my little problems. You see that? That's Seeking Answers 444. You are not faithful. Why am I not faithful? What did I do? Huh? What did I do? This is about Fiona. This isn't about me. You keep my own business to myself and you go screw away. You're a liar and you know it. Lying devil. Poof, Jesus Christ rebuke you. Who did I cheat on? No one. I'll tell you that. I've cheated on with no one. No one has touched my body since Chris. Chris is the last man that's ever touched my body. The last man that touched my body. The last man that has touched my body was Chris. I didn't cheat on no one. Lord, rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Liar. Now, I know he came to derail Ecclesiastes. Now, now listen to this, Fiona. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightened in us. But ye are straightened in your own bowels. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children. Be ye also enlarged. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You listen to that? I'll say it again. I'll say it thrice. Be ye not unequally yoked with together with unbelievers. Be ye 
not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, listen to this, Fiona, wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You're not receiving because you're touching the unclean thing, Fiona. How many times has G-Man, uh, G-Man has warned you so many times over this. And you won't listen to him. Maybe you'll listen to a sister. Maybe. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, say the Lord Almighty. Do you see what that says, Fiona? Look at it yourself. Look at it yourself. You're not doing right by the Lord, and I wish you would. I wish you would, because you, you have an amazing platform, Fiona. You have the most amazing platform. These people, they could be listening to you. You could be showing them who God truly is. You could be telling them the message of Jesus Christ, and you're not. Why? Why? Why are you so ashamed of his word? Why are you so ashamed of him? He gave you life. He gave you life, girl. He gave you life. And he loved you. He loves you. And he's calling you back. He wouldn't have sent me if he didn't, you know, wasn't trying to call you back to him. I guarantee that he wouldn't be doing that. He loves you. And he needs you to do his job for him. And he's going to call you. He's been calling you for a really long time. Maybe he's been using Gmail to call you, but he's been calling you. Look at how sweet that man was was to you. When you met him in New York. Look how sweet he was to you. How kind that man is. How generous that man is. How loving that man is. Shoot. I would do it. Like seriously. I would do anything to want to meet that brother. Anything to want to meet that brother. I would love to meet my brother in Christ. I would love to meet G-Man. And I will. I will soon. In a few more months, I will be meeting G-Man. And, you know, we're going to be a strong, happy family. All of us in that area. All of us are going to be a strong, happy family. And, and I'm telling you, when you go back to New York, Fiona, I'll be meeting you too. And I'll be saying you the same thing here. The same thing here. You need to stop dealing with these people. Because they're only hurting you in the body of Christ. They're only hurting you with Christ. Because they don't care about Christ. You know that they don't care about Christ. And you may use the excuse, well, they don't believe in Jesus Christ. <sighs> that should bother you, that they don't believe in Jesus Christ. That If you really had the Holy Spirit, you would be doing everything everything to try to push them to find Jesus Christ. You wouldn't be like, oh, they don't believe. I'm just fine. la di da di da di da di da di da I, yes, Veckel and, thank you, Ecclesiastes. Veckel and Ken are very kind brothers in Christ, and I'm going to be meeting them too. You know, I'll be meeting all my brothers in Jesus Christ soon. All of them. All of us are coming together. Do you not see that? All of us are striving to be next to each other because we know we have eternity to live in. But we, like, seriously, but really, should we be waiting for eternity to come together? Should we wait until Jesus Christ comes to be living together, to be together, 
to be a family together? No. We want to do it now. We want to meet our brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to celebrate the Lord together because once we're together, once the ministers of God are finally together, you're going to see amazing things. And that's G-Man. So I'm going to give him a green and You guys have a good day. Fiona, turn to Christ. I'm not finished with you.